Hello everyone. Quick review today of this. It's a Celestron CO62, a 62 mm F5 achromatic refractor sold in the mid-1980s and branded as a Cometron. <laughs> I can remember those days very well. I was an undergrad at Illinois working in the observatory, and I can remember people coming up to us and saying, I really want to see this comet. It was 1986 when this was going to happen, but I don't know if this is the right telescope. It doesn't say it's good for comets. So as a result of this, manufacturers really lean into the marketing, branding a lot of telescopes as comet ready. But of all the manufacturers, no one leaned into the marketing more than Celestron did. It seems like they were trying to put the name Comet or some form of the word Comet on all of their inexpensive telescopes. Some of these were okay, some of these were not very good. And a lot of the Comet scopes from Celestron from that era have gotten a bad reputation as a result. There were some really bad Schmidt Newtonians and Bird Jones uh, reflectors and uh, refractors that were a very low quality on wobbly mounts. So if you remember back then, Halley's Comet was a bit of a bust. I mean, it was okay as far as comets go, but it wasn't anything like what the forecast predicted that it would be. As a result, a lot of these comet telescopes wound up in excess inventory in people's distributors and warehouses. In 1987, I was a recent graduate and got my first real job as an inside sales clerk for an industrial sales firm. I checked stock, I expedited orders, I entered orders. And with my very first paycheck from that very first job, I bought a Cometron telescope from Celestron. Mine was the cheap Burr-Jones reflector type design. And I can remember back then, it was the Orion catalog. And the Orion catalog at that time was a piece of newsprint that was stapled together. And back then, you had to call them to verify that it was in stock. And after you did that, you had to go to the back of the catalog. It was a piece of newsprint, and you'd have to fill out the order form by hand. And you couldn't press too hard with your pencil because the pencil would go right through the newsprint. And then I had to mail them a check, which they insisted had to clear before they shipped it out to me. Boy, those were the days, weren't they? <laughs> But anyhow, a few weeks later, I get the telescope back, and it wasn't this one, it was the Burr-Jones Newtonian design, and it was awful. Uh, out of collimation, typical Burr-Jones problems, 0.965 eyepieces only, and I loved it. And I loved it because I bought that with the fruits of my own labor. I earned the paycheck, I earned the money to buy that telescope. Well, okay, so this one came to me, and it was said that this is brand new and had never been used, and, and I believe them. So there were a lot of these suitcase kind of telescopes sold back then. The way that you know these things haven't been used is there's almost always a crack or a break in this plastic front here. The fact that this one is still intact is a good sign. So you've got a 60 millimeter refractor here with the 6x30 finder. This is very well made. The lens caps here have the circle V on them, indicating that this is probably a Vixen branded product. Now you can swap these things out and pretend that they are, but that doesn't look like it's happened here. And also this is very well built and the optics are actually quite nice. I believe that this is a Vixen branded product. And if you recall, Celestron had an agreement with Vixen for a very long time. The focuser is quite smooth and it is inch and a quarter. So in this, <coughs> cardboard box here, I've taken this out, you get an inexpensive Celestron branded diagonal and a nice volcano top, 25 millimeter Kellner from that time period. This is a bit of a collector's item. On the bottom here, you have what appears to be a Vixen compatible plate. And in fact, this will go into the saddles of Vixen compatible mounts. I have tried this on a number of mounts and it does fit. I don't want to scratch this thing up. So what I did is you can either thread a block like this. It's a quarter inch by 20 thread, or you can get a telescope specific plate like this and bolt it on uh, many different ways that you can do this. You know that I very often caution people against using conventional photographic tripods to mount telescopes, but this thing is so small and light, it actually does work that way. And I used it that way and it was fine. So it came with a tripod and this thing, well, you could use it if you had to, but first of all, this thing is very well made. I don't know if you can tell by looking at it, but this thing weighs over four pounds and it's very dense. And one innovation here is that the feet 
are stored inside the bottom here. And you can screw these things in like this. Don't have to screw them in all the way like that. And the scope can just go on the quarter inch by 20 thread like this. I hope that's caught. Yes, it is. And you can just use it like this. So now this thing has a very nice motion on it. In fact, it's so smooth in both axes. It almost feels like there's some sort of a hydraulic dampening fluid in here, but it isn't. It's just really smooth that you can use this. Of course, you do have the problem that I refer to as the astro strand conundrum. You have to figure out something to set it on. And experience shows that most beginners don't set these things on things that are sturdy enough. So you probably eventually, if you wanted to take this thing seriously, put it on a better mount. But there's no reason why you can't leave it out here on a display stand as a display for in your den or in your office. It actually looks pretty nice. Now on a 60 millimeter refractor, you can see all of the showpiece objects in the night sky, the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Pleiades, the Double Cluster, and many more showpiece the objects in the night sky, they show up just fine. You can look at Jupiter and Saturn, but with only 300 millimeters of focal length to work with, you start having to do things like stack barlows or use squinty, tiny little short focal length eyepieces, or you gotta buy expensive short length focal length eyepieces that have big eye lenses on them. So I'm not sure I would count this thing as a planetary telescope. Also, this thing starts you know, as sturdy as this thing, it starts to get a little bit unsteady once you get to 75 or 100 power or so. But as a quick peat scope, this is just fine. I had a lot of fun taking this thing out several nights in a row. All right, so as I'm playing with this thing, I'm starting to get a sense of deja vu. I've seen this telescope before. And not only that, I've seen this telescope around here before. And not only that, I've seen this telescope around here recently before, but I can't put my finger on it. Stuff gets shoved into closets and down in the basement, and I don't always know where everything is. So I searched around, and I found this. A similarly sized suitcase, a little bit smaller, with a Tasco brand on it. And this is my Tasco, whoops, number 9VR. This is, again, a Vixen branded product. And if you notice, it looks suspiciously similar to this. It is, in fact, the same telescope. This one says Tasco on it. This one says Celestron. Now, you'll see they're outfitted a little bit differently. This one does not have a tripod or a stand or a mount on it. It has this sort of XY axis thing that you put on a tripod, but no actual tripod itself. And as you can see, it comes with a bunch of accessories. Now, the one big difference between these models is that the Celestron is conventional inch and a quarter. The Tasco is 0.965 inches. You can get a Vixen adapter that takes you from the 965 to conventional inch and a quarter, and I have one of those, and that's how I use it. The disadvantage of that, of course, is all of these accessories are now obsolete and useless. So those of you who remember, those of you who have been around long enough, remember in the beginning, Tasco was actually a good telescope. In the early days, they imported quality products from Japan, places like Royal Astro and Gotu and Hallmar and all of those places. Some people ranked them even up there with the quality of the Unitrons. It was only sometime in the mid-1980s that Tasco began importing cheap plastic junk from China, and then they turned into the brand that we all love to hate. So yeah, these are the same telescope. I had them out. They're identical. This one is quite nice. You know, whichever one you run across, these are both good telescopes to buy if you can find them on the used market. This number 9 VR has become a bit of a collector's item. One thing I want to warn you, there is a similar model called a 999 VR. That one is not quite as good. This is the one to get. So there you have it, a look at the Cometron CO62, a Comet-branded refractor from the 1980s meant to cash in on the Halley's Comet craze. I hope you found this information useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.